Hi everyone, back again. Today we're going to finish off our picture that we started the other day using our wet felting technique. But today, before we start, I'll just show you an example of one that I, here's one I made earlier, which is a wet felted background, as you can see. I'll turn it over so you can have a look. Homemade, handmade felt on the back. And then all these embellishments were added with needle felting. This is the kind of needle you need for needle felting. And what I will show you is that if you look, well, you won't be able to see actually, but if I run my fingers the wrong way up the, the barb of the needle, <coughs> it's got little barbs. I don't know if you can actually see that. Which, when you push the wool through the felt, it pushes it out onto the other side, which is what, this is an example of needle felting. This is the very first ever needle felting that I did at camp years ago with Carol and David. And that's the inspiration for all the things I do now. So with needle felting, you have to be very aware that this is an incredibly sharp needle. If you stick that in your finger, you really know about it. What you have to have is a foam pad. Now this is so that you can lay your work onto the pad. Now I'm gonna demonstrate first, very briefly, just with a piece of white, normal, bought uh, felt, just to demonstrate with this little bit of black here, okay? And the idea is that you put the needle into the wool, and by needle felting it in, gathering it as you go, you're pushing all that wool, all that fibre is going through the, the uh, background, which on this occasion is just the white felt. But that will lock that fibre onto your piece of work. Now, I know someone that has actually done this technique on a dress on the pocket of a dress and it, she's washed it and done everything with it and it's been fine. But if I lift this up, doo -doo, that's what that barb in that needle does. If you used a normal needle and just push it through, it doesn't hook it. You need it to be hooked, which is why you use a special needle. I got these needles today, a bit of advertising, I nipped to Hobbycraft and bought these needles. There are three in a pack for three pounds, so they're very they're very reasonable. Um, and also a very important health and safety thing, which I can't find now, is that they've got little. Uh, oh, there it is. You've got a little sheath to put it in because when you finish using it make sure that you put it away, even if you've got any hand and eye coordination. Obviously I haven't. There, see? So that now is pretty safe. You have to be really vigilant. Right then, so let's begin. Now this is the picture that I did the other day when I did the demonstration of the needle felting. Now, a very useful thing about using a needle as well is if you look at this, there's still some bits that are sticking out a bit. So I can use my needle very usefully to lock all those fibres in so that they're not going to come out once it's uh, finished. Okay, so if I do that just very quickly, over a bit, just to keep those big lumps in the right place, keeping it over the block, very important technique this is, you go up and down. The number of people that I've had in my classes that have gone in at that angle, or gone in that angle, anyway, the end of that needle breaks off very easily. You have to be really careful. In fact, I'll probably break it myself now just to show myself how clever I'm not. <laughs> well, that's the beginning. Now what I intend to do to, to embellish that is to use some of these beautiful walls here. 
This wool is called Blue Faced Leicester Locks. And as you can see, they're tiny, tiny little, little ringlets, look, which have been hand dyed. I, I actually get these, this specific wool when I go on holiday to Yorkshire. Um, sometimes you get bigger locks like this. That's probably from a different breed of sheep, I think. Uh, not as easy to use as the very tiny ones. So I've got some green shades and I've got some autumny, could be springy, autumny, whatever shades. I've also selected some greens here so that we can work on our shading within our mountains. Okay, so we can get our perspective sorted. So first of all, if I use my, I'll use this green here, because what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to start on the right hand side of my picture. And I'm just going to run that there. And I'm just going to needle it so you've got a bit of depth of colour just gives you the idea of the shading on that side of the hill. Now, when you're needle felting, when you've got bits like this that are hanging out, all you have to do is tuck them in and push them in. And then they're back where they should be. So I'll turn it over again. You'll see the magic. See, it's needle felted itself to the block, which is good. And there it is. It's all locked. And there was our felt that we made last time. Okay, now I'm going to have a look at this part here because I think this little bit here needs to be a little bit lighter because the sun is over here. So the light source is coming from this direction. We're just going to put a little bit of this lighter green. Actually, that's the same as that. One. We'll put a bit of this lighter green. Now, when you sometimes you look at colours, and you think, nah, that's not, never going to work. But actually, quite often, when you look at nature, it's surprising how much incredibly bright colours there are in actual landscapes that you wouldn't think were real when you come to look at it when you've done it yourself. Now, it's just to give you an idea of a bit of a depth going on there okay this is a whistle stop tour of uh, needle felting obviously because now i'm going to do at the front I'm going to put a hedge in the front now another very important thing about using these walls you don't cut it it's like the same as when we did our felting wet felting for the background you never cut it you only you might trim your picture when you finish, but you don't actually go as far as cutting the wool. You pull it off. Then when I feed this in, you'll see that I'm actually creating a hedge line. Because in a minute, in my field here where the hedge is, we're gonna have a sheep. So we're gonna need a hedge to keep that sheep in. Okay, we've got different shades of green, so we can have a bit of a darker shade. In fact, this here, which is incredibly dark, that would be perfect for on our hillside here to have a line of fir trees in the distance. Okay, so out of this lump here, I'm going to, just going to take a little bit of brown to give the impression of the bottom of the trees. That maybe they're not fir trees, maybe they're oak trees or something, but just gives you an idea of the edge of the forest that's going up that mountain. Put a little bit more on the top. So you've got your fuzzy bits. Just work your fuzzy bits in. There you go. 
And that mountain has now got half a forest on the top of it that always look better from a distance, these pictures, of course, a bit like me. Right, so we've got a hedge at the front. If you didn't want a hedge and you wanted to have a brick wall, a stone wall, you could just try and figure out whether you've got a bit of grey in there. There's a bit of grey there, look, because these are hand dyed and they're all different shades. So I think we'll have a bit of, this can be a stone wall on this part here. That's gonna be a bit chunkier. Okay, there you go. A little tiny bit more grey in that one, I think. Let's just have a look here. Let's try and find a bit of grey. There's a bit of grey there, look. Feeding it in again. So there's your stone wall. A lot of the pictures that I do are modelled on things I've seen in Yorkshire, so a lot of stone walls up there in the dales. Okay, so there's your foreground. Now, on the hillside over there, you've probably got a bit of uh, heather or bracken going on. So let's put a bit of this over here on this edge here, because texture is the thing This is the bracken up on the hill. Now, depending on how much you work on this, depends on how flat it will become. But obviously at this point, I'm just making it, I'm just showing you how to do it. It'll be up to you to uh, do the finer points. In that little space there, I am actually going to cut some wool. Now this is not felting wool, this is just normal wool because I'm going to make a little gate here. So you can cut yourself a little bit of normal wool. Felt it in. Okay. I'm going to pull that over a bit so the gate's not quite so big because that's the other amazing thing about <laughs> any felting project is that if you don't feel you like what you've just done you can actually just pull it off and start again it's it's not well like when you've got halfway through a, um, an artwork using paint and you're stuck with whatever you've done actually this is very much more forgiving um, so we've got a little bit there, across the middle. And a little bit on the top. And it looks like you've got your five bar gate, but mine's only got two bars, but nobody's counting, are they? So there's your gate, okay. Let's just hold it up and see what we're looking like so far. We're getting there. Hope you get the idea of what I'm trying to achieve in a whistle stop tour. Now at the front here, because we're trying to remember perspective, I'm going to make a sheep. So a little piece of wool. You don't want very much. Less is more in this situation. We're just going to get it so that we're styling it into the legs. Okay. Quite fat legs, but anyway. <laughs> Some sheep have fat legs. And there. A little lump of wool. I haven't decided yet which direction my sheep is looking. Because that's always a bit of a trick, is to work out which way your sheep's facing. This is the head at this end, I think. Looking at it now. Uh, 
and we need a little black nose. So to do the nose, I'm just going to roll that up a bit because that needs to be seriously small. I'm just going to put that on there. Quite a big nose to start, but I will work it in. Making sure that the nose doesn't meet the, the legs. That doesn't work, does it? There you go. And there's your sheep. What do you think of that? A very basic little sheep. In the foreground. Right, and then just over here... We'll have a bit more woodland over here. So I'm going to get some more of my beautiful curly locks. As you can see, this is a slightly different wool. Uh, I think it's actually the same sheep, but it is behaving slightly diff differently. It's more, it's much curlier wool. Um, much silkier wool, I should say, not more, not much curly. It's just a lot silkier. So it's actually quite, it doesn't want to behave quite as well as the other stuff. But the effect is good. Okay. How are we looking? See, from a distance... We're getting the idea, aren't we? I think what we'll do on this, over this, the brow, this hill here as well, we'll put a bit more green to give the idea of, again, another, another hillside over there with trees over the back. So I'm going to feed it in. Do not push it through your finger because you won't half know about it. These are going to be the trees on the top of the mountain. See, I'm being careful now because I can feel that I'm not thinking about how I'm pushing the needle in. And that is just the moment you break it. And when you break the needle, then you've got to find the end because you don't want that falling on the floor and poking in your feet. That's better see how we're working now building it up okay now I think in this in the distance sorry I'm just gonna get up go in my box and get that actually that little bit of just gonna get this little tiny bit of it's not blue and it's not white. It's a bluey white because I'm going to make some water down here in front of this wall here. We'll have some water running by as well, past where the sheep's standing. Now, when I've got, if I've got too much wool like that, what I'll do is I'll just pull it off again, very carefully, so you don't snag it. But Okay, we've even got a river running through at the front. Just try to keep your idea of perspective. Now, when you get these lines, you'll find you get these little holes in, but when you've finished your work, if you just massage it a little bit you'll find that the holes begin to disappear and by the time you've actually put it in the frame it's it's fine there won't be a problem with your little holy bits right one more bit over there i think on that on the edge of that hill there then i think at this point we finish this because we don't need to um 
I don't think we need to put any more detail on it at this point. Now that's where the hillside is running down into the valley. On the top of there, actually, we could have a little bit of corn or something, I think, or I don't know, something yellowy, because we're catching the rays of the sun again, so a bit more here. I think softening those edges. Now I'm going to get the over it now because I think we've finished and I would recommend when you actually uh, frame your work is that you frame it in a in a frame that has a raised border so that you don't flatten the wall, because although the wall needs to be slightly flatter maybe, it doesn't need to be squashed. Uh, this is one, again, that I did before, which is a copy of Klimp's uh, Birch Forest using the same walls and actually the same normal knitting wall for the trunks of the trees. But if you notice, it is a raised uh, mount which gives the wool room to breathe okay I hope you've enjoyed that um, I've enjoyed doing it I'm sweating a bit now but I'm glad you came and joined me and uh, see you soon bye <laughs>